Okay, let's talk about setting up a VPN on our Raspberry Pi. There are a number of reasons you would want to do this, and it is thankfully very easy thanks to the people over at a project called PyVPN. Uh, we're just going to walk through the steps. PyVPN is just a simplified setup of OpenVPN, which is uh, open source VPN software that's available for free and compatible with darn near anything. It'll allow you to access anything connected to your home network from an outside network, like a hotel room or something. Just a couple of days ago, I was vacationing and I was able to use this to access my file server, which we set up in our last video. I'll put a link up there. I was able to use this VPN to stream movies and music from my uh, file server back home. If you don't already have a Pi set up, for this purpose, we're going to start from the very beginning. So you'll want to go to the raspberrypi.org website and go to downloads and download a uh, Raspbian desktop. For our purposes, we don't need a graphical interface, so I'm just going to do Raspbian Buster Lite. We are going to download the zip and we'll go ahead and open it up because there's no reason to leave it zipped. All right, so that gives us a .img file, which is an image of the operating system. I am going to extract that into my downloads folder. I'll show the file, there it is. And I will take micro SD card, plug it into an SD card reader plug this into the USB on my desktop. So once your computer sees that SD card, you will open up the Etcher program. Uh, this is available from any Linux repository or the Etcher website. And I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description if you need that. Uh, Etcher is a real simple program. It asks you to choose your image and choose your drive. So we will choose the uh, the Buster Light image that we just downloaded and extracted, and we'll choose our 32 gigabyte uh, drive, and then we'll flash it. If you're on Linux, it'll ask for your uh, root password, and it will flash. So we'll let that go, and we'll be right back. And that doesn't take too long, so flash complete. We have the SD drive showing in a couple of places here. The boot and the rootfs partitions. We want to look into the boot partition, and I'm going to create a new file. It'll be an empty document, and it will just be called ssh. This will allow me to uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi without uh, hooking it up to a display or a keyboard or anything like that. So I want to be able to do everything from the computer that I'm on right now. In order to do that, I have to create an SSH file. Now it's real important that that file does not have an extension. You see I've listed uh, the file on the boot drive here. It's just called SSH. If you're in Windows, it'll want to put a .txt on that. You want to make sure to rename it to SSH plain, plain SSH. Okay, so now we can remove our uh, our SD card. Once ejected, you can just remove the uh, the card, put it in your Raspberry Pi, and now I'm going to plug this guy into my network. All I'm doing is I'm plugging in the network port and the power. I'll give that a couple of minutes to boot, and then I'm going to log on to my uh, router's interface, which is, for me, at 192.168.1.1 in the browser. Enter my password. And I'm going to look at the clients connected to my network. And I should see something like this. Raspberry Pi. What I'm looking for is its IP address. 192.168.1.241. So if I'm in Windows, here's where I open up PuTTY and enter that IP address. 
if I'm in Linux, all I've got to do is say SSH, the username will be pi at 192.168.1.241. I am sure that I trust it. And it's asking for the password, which by default is Raspberry. And now we're on to our Raspberry Pi. Very first thing you always want to do here is change your password. So there we go. I have a new password as the root user. It's very important. You never want to leave the, the password as Raspberry. It's just asking for trouble. Um, and then I am going to go to the Pi VPN website right here at pyvpn.dev and it gives you the instructions on how to install it and it really is as easy as copying this into your Raspberry Pi. It'll run a system update and it will download the uh, the VPN software and we'll go step by step to get that set up. All right, here's the VPN setup. We'll go OK. It needs a static IP address. It recognizes its current IP address and asks you if you want to make it static. You absolutely do. Um, I wouldn't worry about this if you're using a somewhat modern router. It's not going to assign that IP to somebody else. And we'll choose a local user. Our only user is Pi. And that's OK. It asks if you want to install unintended upgrades. Absolutely you do. That keeps your Pi up to date with security updates and that's that's something you definitely want since we're, it will be open up to the internet through one port. All right, by default it's going to choose UDP traffic for a VPN that's pretty ideal. Uh, there's no reason to change this unless you have a specific reason to want to use TCP. So we'll go with UDP. I'll go with the default port. You can change this if you want to. Just know what you change it to because we're going to have to open that up later. So we'll go OK. Are these port settings correct? Yes. And it talks a little bit about security. The default of 256 is complex enough for my purposes. If you're running like super, super secret, super, super sensitive information, you might want to up it. But the chances of somebody getting past the 256 bit encryption are low. So we'll go with that. And then it asks about your public IP. It will sense what your public IP is, so you can go with the default here. It'll ask what DNS provider you want to use. I recommend OpenDNS. Press the spacebar there to select it. And enter. Would you like a custom search domain? No. Right arrow to select no. And now we will create a profile to use the VPN. It asks if we want to reboot. I'm going to go ahead and reboot. Okay, and it lost the connection to the Pi as it reboots. So let's do something. I'm just sending a ping to the Pi to see when it comes back online, and then we will log right back in. Here I'm typing the password that I changed it to, and we're back on the Pi. So there we go. We wanted to do a Pi VPN add. Add. And then this will take us through a few things. Enter a name for the client. Let's just call it Harry. Let's, this is a key for Harry. How many days should the certificate last? Uh, 1,080 is fine. You can extend that as long as you want it to, or as short as you want it to. If you have a reason to give somebody a key to your network that you want to expire, here's where you set it to expire. You can always deactivate it manually later, but this is when it will automatically stop working. Enter a password. You'll want to use something fairly complex here. And there you go. Now Harry has access to your network, but there are a couple of things we got to do to get him on there. The first thing is we need to set your router to recognize that the traffic coming into the VPN's port will go to this Raspberry Pi. So we'll go back to the router page. 
We will go to Advanced Settings on a TP-Link router. This may vary by manufacturer. And I'm going to go to NAT Forwarding, Port Forwarding. And we will do an add here. Service is VPN. The address of our device was, what was it? One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two forty one, and the port that we used was the default port of eleven ninety four. That will be internal and external, and you can leave it as all, but UDP is all that we really need to worry about. We'll enable that and save. I'm not going to save it because I have mine going to my uh, my other Pi. Something to keep in mind here is if your router is behind another device, like a cable modem, it's possible that that cable modem is also functioning as a router. If that's the case, then that 1194 port isn't going to make it through the cable modem to get to your router. You will need to uh, log into your ISP's cable modem and set it to bridge mode or set up a second port forwarding for that 1194 port to go to your router so it can then go to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, your ISP can help you with that, but your, your cable modem probably has a little sticker on it that says what its IP address is and the credentials to get in there. You go in there and set it to bridge mode and you'll be good. Now I should also note that we have set this to work with an external IP address. An alternative is to set it to work with a DNS address, which would be a plain text. Uh, there is something called DDNS. If you're going to be using the VPN frequently, this is worth looking into. TP-Link actually offers free DDNS with their routers. And what that will do is link your public IP address to, to a named web address, like something dot tplinkdns.com. You, you create the name and that links to your external IP address. That way, when your ISP changes that external address, the DDNS recognizes that and updates to your new external IP address. So that just keeps it stable. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you would go through the same steps, except instead of using the external IP address, you would choose the option to use a DNS address, and you would tell it the name of the address that you want to use. But as far as this is concerned, we're ready to go using the key that we've created. Now, here's, here's another important thing. We've given Harry access, and you see right there, Harry.ovpn was copied to home slash pi slash ovpns. So we have to have some way to get Harry his ovpn file. So what I'm going to do in, uh, in Cinnamon Nemo, I'm going to go file, connect to server, and I'm going to put in the IP address. I'm going to tell it it's an SSH. My username is going to be pi, and my password is going to be what we set before. And I'm going to connect. And this will ask for your root password. And now we can browse the files on our Raspberry Pi. And the file we're looking for is in home pi ovpns. And there's our file. So I can easily copy it. I can bring it into uh, my home folder, paste it here. Now we have a copy on our computer. From here, I can email it to Harry. I can copy it to a phone that I plug in. I can copy it to a laptop that's on the network. All that matters to get Harry onto our VPN is that he has this file. So, in, so from here, all he has to do is install an open VPN client. Uh, those for mobile devices, those are going to be in your app store. Just search open VPN and download it. 
For Linux, you want to make sure you have OpenVPN installed. Um, you install it the same way you install anything else. And then you'll add a network connection. I clicked on the network, I clicked on network connections, and I click on plus, and we want to add a VPN connection. It's tempting to, uh, to choose open VPN because that's really what this is, but what we want to do is import a saved VPN conf configuration. So we do that, create, and it'll go to the file browser, this is where you tell it where you want to create. So you go to Harry, and it imports all the certificates. It imports the external address we'll be connecting to, and it asks for the password that we created during the setup. Save that. We have a VPN connection called Harry. Now I can go here, and I can turn that guy on anytime I'm on a network that's not this network. Now, I am i can't VPN into a network that I'm on, so I can't turn that on now, but that file has all of the information that it needs to connect to your network. Uh, that's the same file that you'll import onto your phone or onto your laptop or onto any computer that you want to have access to your home network, and then once you're uh, once you're on an outside network, turn it on and you'll be able to reach your home network. That is a lot of information. I hope it's been pretty clear. Uh, going through the steps is the best way to learn it for yourself. And I hope I've been helpful in showing you how to walk through those steps. It's really pretty cool and pretty useful. So thanks for joining me here. Let me know if you have any questions or any ideas on future videos. Uh, thanks so much for joining me here on Fairly Basic Tech.